everybody, welcome back. Look at this, 50 wins in a row. Can you believe this? Who would have thought? Not me, etc, etc. Um, we have hive minds. We have bad stats. No, how about that? K N O W Y seven K one. I guess it's not O W. You know what I mean. Zero. I was gonna say I, I don't. I'm not familiar with that number because zero is not a number uh, I see on my streak very often. Except uh, I also see it <laughs> right now because we're at fifty, which has a zero in it. How about that? Dude, can you imagine being the person who came up with numbers? Like, don't get me wrong. Like, we're, as, as a society, and I recognize the irony of me saying this after, you know, the things I talked about in the last episode. As a, as a, as a general population, you know, we're, we're smarter, essentially, than humanity has ever been, right? There's some willful ignorance, for whatever reason. Um, but also, in terms of, like, our understanding of the world around us, you know, we, we, we've really made a lot of progress, you know, since the year negative 300, right? Um, but how smart do you have to be? Like, you gotta be pretty smart now. If you're gonna be, you know, I'm gonna build a rocket ship. I'm gonna, you know, uh, come up with some quantum physics theories and stuff like that. You gotta be pretty smart. But how smart do you have to be? to invent numbers, dude. I can't even imagine how smart you'd have to be. It's like, again, I don't know what I'm talking about, so that's the first thing. <laughs> In case that wasn't already clear. However, I'm always, like, you ask me like, who's the smartest person? In Oh God, um, I think I like it, but I gotta think for a minute. Who's the smartest person in Earth's history? I don't know, you know, I know that the, probably one of the examples that people would use would be uh, Albert Einstein, but, you know, he's almost like a little too contemporary for me. Um, I, you know, my uh, favorite smart person in history goes to another school. You wouldn't have heard of them. They live in Canada. But I feel like my, my actual pick would be like one of those Greek mathematicians who like approximated the circumference of the Earth to within a few hundred miles just using the sun and like eight pieces of string. That's incredible. I can't even imagine. Like ev every single story from before the year 1600 about learning anything about the natural world is basically like its own little miniature version of the Martian. Or like, you know, how, how uh, Tony Stark built this in a cave with a box of scraps. Like, every single way, Aristotle <laughs> approximated the depth of the Adriatic Sea, and all he had was, uh, you know, a glass jar, you know? It's, it's incredible, the ingenuity you had to have to even, like, design the apparatuses of an experiment back then. I don't even, look, again, I don't really know what I'm talking about. That being said, I've, I'm very confident nonetheless. All right. So I'm thinking, um, it, it's a spicy reroll. The thing is, like, uh, you, you gotta be afraid of a reroll early on in a situation like this. Like, our run is not that good, obviously. However, we're not gonna be able to reroll that many items. And then, secondarily, we may never get another chance at a reroll again. So I'm just kind of trying to hedge our bets. And I guess I'm, I'm taking it down to, to base principles. Is this run better or worse than average right now? It's much worse than average. However, it could be very screwed up. <laughs> the thing is, like, here's the thing. Let's say it's, you know, this is a 2 out of 10 Eden start right now. It's probably a little better than that because we got HP. But uh, that's that's fine and might warrant a reroll. But can we win a 2 out of 10? Easily, yes. Um, maybe easily is a little bit hubris filled but um what if we reroll and we get a zero out of ten that's right i use all uh i use all the parts of the the review system as, as i mentioned numerous times in track mania pepsi bottle a coca-cola gloss okay just want to see what we got because if we get oh <laughs> Um, we'll take because we'll get the resources out of this as well. And then we'll uh, come down here and see what the heck we got going on. Three cents. Wow. Well worth it. Well worth it. 
I think we I think we re-roll. I, I do. Um I think before we... I, I think we can hedge our bets in a couple of different ways, which is why I like it. The, one of the ways is by blowing these up, but not leaving the room after we open the chest, so we'll get a reroll on these as well. I'll probably take this, because we stand a good chance to get some keys. Um, I don't care about the bombs, I'd rather get the reroll on that right off the bat. So... Okay. Uh, I, I already like it. Are I... Uh, losing... Uh, fire mind. You're not gonna hear me say this too much. Thanks for taking my key, by the way. I really appreciate it. It's not like uh, I wanted to be able to go to the shop or whatever. Um, losing fire mind is pretty bad, actually. But gaining uh, the nose goblin or whatever the heck this is called is is better. Our stats didn't change at all, bro. Let me in. We got a ton of money. We're gonna have good HP. I guess we'll just bounce. It, it certainly is not bad. But uh, maybe, maybe didn't quite meet my expectations. But really, like, we got, we got okay damage. Not great damage. Okay damage. We've got uh, three spirit hearts, which pretty much guarantees deal with the devil status. We really... Um, okay, not, not uh, too wise of a move on my part. But we really just need... Um, a good deal with the devil. If we get a good deal with the devil, then we're... I mean, that's how, like, at least 25% of Isaac runs. That's how the workflow goes. You know, you just try to get to the point where they're actually, uh... You know, you get a... You, you survive long enough to get one item from a deal with the devil that busts things wide open, and then you're off to the freaking races. Buddy. Okay, keep it moving here. Keep it moving. How am I doing? I'm doing well. It's a Thursday. Today's today's my last episode of Check the Wire before paternity leave. How about that? Really sneaks up on you. Thank you for the key. We will peep this real quick. I regret it, but that's fine. You're going to regret a lot of those. It is, it's, it's definitely getting to the point where it's kind of surreal. The way I look at it is like, um, you know, maybe let, you work in like a corporate environment. You might book your vacation. Not, not to say that, you know, parenthood is exclusively going to be like a recreational journey, you know? But um, you, you book your vacation like a year in advance. Maybe it's like May 2019 and you're like, oh, in April 2020. But, by the way, bad timing. <laughs> but in April 2020, I'm taking my dream vacation, you know? And you start, you think about it. You're like, oh, it's like a long time away. But then, you know, it, it starts to become very real. It, it, like for a while, we were kind of in the abstract. You know, oh, I forgot that I could just walk. Okay, you can't walk into the red ones, but you can walk into the other ones. Um, for a while, you, you think about it kind of like, uh, you know, they, they tell you at any given moment, you know, labor could start. It's good to be prepared, right? But when you're like a month in advance of the due date, you're like, the, if you look at the odds of, uh, like, premature delivery, it's, it's not low, but it's not to the point where you're like, oh, okay, I'm going to be like on edge at all times. But now that we're like, you know, 11 days away, which is now like, get away from me, please. Um, you know what, we're gonna, we're gonna place this bad boy down right there, because we want to be able to get to this. We would love small rock. That's also still fine, but um, yeah, like it's, I mean, it's very real. The good news is like, I mean, there's no bad news. It's actually good news that the, you know, baby's gonna be here soon, because honestly, like, Kate's just getting sick of being pregnant. <laughs> You know, one way or the other, the baby is coming out. If anything, you know, maybe there was a little bit of like, ah, you know, you, un until we're ready, it would be nice for this to go on as long as possible. But now that we're, like, totally ready, she's like, I just want this. Like, I want to move on to the next phase because I'm sick of, you know, not being able to breathe that well or sleep that well. You know, acid reflux, et cetera, et cetera. I did hit you with that that green tier. I did indeed, and I I definitely uh, I sympathize. I can't really empathize because you know I don't know. The closest thing that I got is like you know imagine you ate like a really big meal, but instead of being like oh in a couple hours it's gonna be digested, it was like uh, you know in September. Oh, let's go. You're gonna be able to... Yo, get some relief! 
Um, the rune bag is good enough. This, this is a fantastic item. We definitely want the shop more than the double key room. We're taking forever here, dude. I'm really... That's our shop. Why, why did I think that was a double key room? Whatever. We don't, we don't need to go right away. We got, we got six bombs. Let's see what this deal with the devil is. This is a big quality of life potential for me. But yeah, I mean, we're at that point, you know. I don't want to say this is something you dread, but the, the closest analog that I have is like... You know, if, if... And it's not really like you have a choice whether or not to procrastinate it. <laughs> it's just, you know, it's happening in 40 weeks, whether you want it to or not. But, um, you know, when, when you have something that's coming up, and you kind of are like, oh, that's going to be like a momentous life event. It's in the abstract for a long time. Then you get within like a week or two, and you're like, okay, now it's no longer in the abstract. Now it's like, it's all my, it's all my mind. But in a good way, again. You know, we're we're just kind of eagerly awaiting it for for the most part. Although I will say, bad society. Bam! I'm smacking your nose with a newspaper. Bad society. We were supposed to have this whole virus thing under control, but you had to have your bachelor bachelorette parties. You had to throw underground proms. You had to make it into a into a partisan issue instead of like a scientific epidemiological issue, didn't you? you ju it just wasn't enough for you. When we, it, the number of times, and, and I don't know, maybe there's some selfishness here. The number of times that, you know, it was like in March or April, where we're like, ooh, this stuff's really popping off. I'm glad we're in, you know, our due date isn't for a while. This gives us a chance to really get it under control. Well, that was a freaking lie. That's the Tyler the Creator meme. You guys really screwed this one up for me. I, I, I'm, I'm pretty annoyed. And just, you know, I'm going to remember that. I'm going to remember that. I'm, I'm writing it down in my moleskin. I don't know what I'm going to do about it, but okay. Two of clubs. I mean, it's three cents for seven bombs. I actually, I'm going to say it. Okay, I'm not afraid to say it. I think chaos is kind of overrated. Unless you have, like, restock... Steam sales, etc., etc. I'll, I'll... Look, the thing is, we're not really that strong right now. I'm willing to take a little bit more HP. Okay, Blue Candle is way better. <laughs> it's, like, substantially better than Krampus' head. Um, I would probably fish for our secret room. This is gonna be a longer run. There's nothing wrong with that, but it's gonna be a bit of a longer run. Nope. Um, anyway. I mean, as that, we got very little else going on, as you might expect. You know, I, you know what I will say? I watched the first episode, and I, I'm, I'm just, like, flitting back and forth between television programs right now. Because, like, I know that soon, I don't know if I'm going to have a lot more time to watch TV, or if I'm never going to watch another television show until, like, 2039, right? Um, but... I watched the first episode of that HBO Max show by Ridley Scott, Raised by Wolves, about human beings um, that are raised by uh, androids. It's actually... I was surprised. It's... I don't think it's going to be for everybody. And I'm not even sure how much I liked episode one, but it was an incredibly bold start to a television program. If you, if you haven't seen it, would I recommend it? Oh, dude, we're, we're going... We're, oh, we're going hard on this one. Okay. Would I recommend it? I, I can't not recommend watching at least one episode if you have an interest in sci-fi. Because it's a very... Uh, it's a very bizarre and, and atypical sci-fi show, for sure. It starts a little... I mean, because it's got that Ridley Scott thing with androids where the androids are, like, disarmingly logical. Um, but would, that makes them kind of goofy in their own right, you know what I mean? Like Michael Fassbender in uh, Alien Covenant playing the flute. <laughs> you know what I... If you've seen the movie, you know what I'm talking about. It's like the most dunked on scene in the whole movie. But also like kind of apprehensive or, you know, anxiety inducing when you watch it yourself. Um, this is an XL. It is an XL. Okay, I, I think most important thing, get to the shop. Get to the shop. Uh, Arnold, Arnold S. Um... 
But yeah, I, w I mean, I haven't seen episode two yet, so I, I don't know where it goes from there. But it's, it's very, um, it's very kind of like disgusting in a in a in an arty way. And I I sort of uh, I find myself enamored with it. I'm hoping to get an opportunity to watch some more. I mean, I have HBO, so I don't want to go off on a Jerry Seinfeld bit, but. Trying to figure out whether you have access to an HBO Max show in 2020 is like... I, I really... I still do not understand what HBO Max is. I have HBO, but you don't just get HBO in Canada anymore. It comes through this service called Crave. Crave is like our Hulu, but you don't get the same shows on Hulu that you get on Crave and vice versa. It's Canadian Hulu. It's a different thing. But then Crave also includes... Uh, the option for HBO and Showtime. So if you have HBO, you definitely get HBO Go, but do you have HBO Max on top of that? I don't know. I have access to CBS, but I don't have access to CBS All Access, so I can't watch The Good Fight, only... Oh, now you can watch The Good Fight, because all the seasons are on Amazon Prime Video. Why Why does CBS All Access exist if all the videos or if all the episodes are on Prime Video? I don't understand. You know what? I will get, take this, and then we can get some keys out of... Uh... Ooh, interesting. Interesting. We'll give Key Beggar some keys now. We don't really need them as much. Anyway, long story short, I have access to Raised by Wolves. <laughs> and, uh, you know, it's, it's an interesting show. I recommend it. I, I don't know why I tried to take it after I said I would give it to you, but... Um, and I gotta, I gotta admit... Oh, that's good eats. So I'm still watching... Lovecraft Country. I'm still enjoying myself whilst I watch Lovecraft Country. Um, but the show, I wouldn't say the show has lost me. But it's more anthological. I don't know if that's a word. The, the more anthology um, structured way that that show is going, um, the, the less kind of interested I am. I, I, you know... I don't mean that as like a, a, a super negative or anything like that. But it, in a weird way, I think that like, and again, if you haven't seen, <laughs> you know, episode two, you're going to be confused by what I'm about to say. But in his own weird way, I like admired what they did in episode two more than I actually found myself enjoying it. Like, it, to be honest with you, it kind of took the wind out of my sails for part of the rest of the series. But I'm still, you know, we're still learning. It's, you know, we're only midway through the season there's still a chance for it to come back but definitely a little bit more interested in what's going on with raised by wolves just uh although i will also say episode one you know it, all episode ones have an unfair advantage either way that was basically mine i mean i had like an insanely busy day yesterday It's not really, like, major busy stuff. Like, I'm not complaining, but I was, like, I was exhausted last night. What did I do? Well, I recorded eight videos, which is, like, a little bit more than your average Wednesday. And then I also, you know, I did the NLSS, which is three hours. But then, like, the real thing that added a little bit on top of it was, like, I uh, took the cats into the pet groomer so that there's, like... You know, we, we've got a more hypoallergenic environment for when the baby is here. And then while I was out, Kate was like, hey, can you run to the doctor's office as well? They, they have, like, a care kit for, like, post-delivery. So I was like, yeah, no problem. But it's Vancouver drivers and it's Vancouver traffic and it's busy. So that took a oh, do it. This is really good with 30 touch if we can get some kind of invincibility. So that took, like, longer than expected. Then I was, like, a little late for the NLSS, which is always frustrating for me because I, I am an early person, you know? So when I am late, I'm like, I screwed up badly. I only left 40 minutes early for the grooming appointment when I should have left, you know, 55 minutes early. Um, so we did the NLSS, and then I, like... You know, the groomers closes, like, very shortly after the NLSS. So I was like, go, go, go. I don't want my boys to be stuck there overnight. I don't even think that's how it works. Then I showed up, and he's, he's like, uh, hey, we didn't call you yet. We're not done. And I'm like, yeah, but you're closing. And he's like, nah, we're working late tonight because we're behind schedule. So I drove home again, and I, did, you know, I recorded another couple videos, and I drove back. I don't think we want it, actually. You kept making the stops. People kept ringing the bell. 
I don't really know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> anyway. So I was checking a tweet. Apparently my, my pronunciation of the Italian word magnifico is not, um, is not quite apt. I'll work on that. I'll, I'll put that one on the list. I, I, I do, uh, you know, self-improvement. I, I think it's important to take honest stock of, of where you stand. Um, so I, I will work on making sure that my pronunciation of the word Magnifico is uh, up to true Italian standards. I apologize for being so flippant about my use of the word in the first place, you know? It... I should have learned to pronounce it before my brain had an impulse. Okay, I'm being a little petty. I'm just saying. <laughs> How's this run going? It's like, it's on the cusp of breaking out. We got a lot of amazing utility stuff. Rune bag's awesome. Um, I actually, I, I wouldn't say I'm disappointed with Blue Candle. Uh, but it, it kind of got cannibalized a little bit by... Um, By uh, Little Brim, which is just like, I, I think Blue Candle's probably more damage, uh, maybe even considerably more damage. But uh, Little Brim is kind of just like a, an easier, like, set it and forget it style. But I, I, I would look to replace Blue Candle, but I should also, like, use it more. Before we determine whether or not we actually uh, don't like it anymore. I mean, you can always just use Blue Candle after you shoot your Little Brim. Or you could use Blue Candle first, because then, like, once it's gone, it's gone, you know, for 20 seconds or something. Uh, that is... Okay, I thought I... I don't know what I was scared of there. Uh, if, if we were going for Spun, that might be worth it. But we, we already didn't take Experimental Treatment. That's okay, but we can fish for something better. Um, dude, honestly, like, this is pretty much perfect. A much better item, and we're not using Blue Candle anyway. And then Holy Light is... Uh, is actually really good. So now we'd be looking for a rate of fire increase. And if we can get it... All of a sudden, this run is quite the powerhouse. We don't like... Uh, car battery with this. I think we like blanket decently enough. We can walk into bosses with blanket. At least one time. These are not good. We need something. We need like champion belt. I, that's like my go-to. I am thinking about what, you know, what about the idea of like just buying this and like buying all of the seven cent items and then getting one fat reroll later. Um, I'm, so I'm actually, I'm going to use mystery gift in here. So we have a, a bigger reroll opportunity, but uh, we're not going to reroll that. It's actually really good. Or at least good enough. Um... Sharp Plug is not a an, uh, a passive. Or sorry, it is a passive, so we don't want it here. I think we want to take this, we want to reroll that, um, which also rerolls everything, which is amazing. Um, so we will take Pandora's Box, which gives us a bunch of Spirit Hearts. And we will also take Tarot Cloth, which is really, we shouldn't even call it Tarot Cloth, we should call it Yara Cloth right now. Because <laughs> uh, we got Yara. <laughs> Santa brought it early. Does this mean I'm not gonna get anything now? Dude, this is gonna be a long one, though. No, we don't want uh, the mysterious candy, okay? Plus, it's I get offended by this trinket, alright? Because it says mysterious candy, but it's clearly a piece of chocolate. Is chocolate candy? I mean, I don't like to get into these... Uh, you know, uh, categorical discussions anymore. I find it beneath me as I, you know, uh, get closer and closer towards middle age at a pace that feels like a hurdle. Um, but I, I don't know. I, I kind of see candy and chocolate as, as two different... Uh, as two different things. I think we, we like Abaddon well enough. And we like a reroll, but we don't like it too much. Eh, we'll just take it and move on, I think. We're starting to... I, the run is not an easy win. Or has not always been an easy win here. But we, we've always been comfortable. Dude, look at this map. It looks like a, somebody's lungs. 
You see it, I don't even deny it. Your role is not to, um, you know, play devil's advocate for me. Your role is to uh, agree with what I say even when it sounds ridiculous. That's what I'm waiting for. I'm just realizing as well. If we if we encounter another reroll machine situation, we can essentially run into enemies and create a golden poop at will. Which is oh ew, 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 ew. is actually like super super valuable if we encounter like a shop that has a lot of buying potential. I would definitely I'm I'm telling you I love uh the D6, the D6 has already done some pretty good stuff for us. Um, but man, oh man, would I lose my freaking mind if we were able to get Unicorn Stump. Infinite Golden Poops. It's a little late for it to be like absurdly amazing, but it's still a, it's a novel mechanic. And, and again, you know, for all the uh, occasional slash frequent negative things I bring up regarding Isaac... Um, they did a really good job with, with a lot of stuff in particular on, on Rebirth. Like, the bespoke synergies are, are so nice, rather than just like, you know, I mean, it, it's easy to forget that in Flash Isaac, like, synergies were, were relatively rare, and most were, like, unintended, I think. They did a really good job on the, on the bespoke synergies. And again, with, you know, hundreds of items in the game. I'm not saying every unique combination of items should have its own synergy, but they, they pinpointed... Not not all are in there, I think, but they did a really good job of, of pinpointing some cool ones that, that make logical sense and, and making it work. That's right, I just complimented Isaac. I mean, I, I complimented somewhat frequently. I, I think it's an extremely great game. I mean, we, we should take the spiders. I, I, I mean... Look, okay, that's why you, that's why you go all the way. <laughs> I can't believe it kind of worked. Well, I mean, it depends on how you feel about Cricket's body. Very small tiers upgrade, but I think with our tier effects, like to get five uh, holy light shots or five, you know, uh, snot shots out of a single shot is pretty sweet. But this run, you're not gonna believe me, but it's like it's still underpowered. It might not seem like it's underpowered, but I'm telling you, we're, we live in a world now and a society. I have it on good authority. We do be living in a society. We live in a society where you need a little bit more than 9 rate of fire 7 damage. Hello. Should you be taking measurements on the printer? Does this mean the printer's not going to be in my office anymore? No, I'm just making a tape, cable so that it doesn't take, like, more space. Ah, I see. Because, like, I, probably the biggest jump scare I get on a, I would say, a twice-weekly basis is <laughs> just minding my own business, and then right next to me I hear, What <laughs> That's, you know, I understand, I understand, it, it, you know, it is what it is. At least you can't remotely operate the paper shredder. That would be, I mean, I don't know how you would get the paper in it remotely. You could just feed the printer directly into it, I guess. There you go, Kate, we could set it up. I, I think I could do this with a, with a Raspberry Pi. Every time an email comes into the business inbox, we could just have it set up to auto print directly into the shredder. No. She said no. And uh, that doesn't really matter because we both know who wears the pants around here. It's her. I dare not defy. Plus, I mean, it's just kind of, I mean, it was a joke. I wasn't trying to be ungrateful about the stuff coming into the business inbox. It's always nice to have the opportunity, but just playing the character of guy who doesn't like when things come into the business inbox. Okay, okay, hold on. Um, 
I think you probably use Yera here. Yera. Yera. I, I like... Kate, okay, you didn't hear it. They said Yera in a weird voice. It wasn't me. Okay, so like, I... Then we buy this, I think, and then we see what we get. And it's no good, but that's fine. Because we're going to reroll it anyway. We don't care about Hive Mind very much. Oh, but you know what we do care about in a big way? The ladder. Just kidding. Um... Definitely don't think this is worth it without like a restock or anything. So let's just no. Okay, the jar also not that interested. Mom's uh, jar of pills. No, thank you. Bogo bombs. Am I a joke to you? I guess that's what we're stuck with. Maybe not. <laughs> we definitely could have bought a reroll there, but all right. Dude, it's been a half hour. We're not even at the mom fight yet. This is and it, it doesn't even have the audacity to kill me. Like we're we're just gonna easily win. But be kind of like a little mildly bored the whole time. Isn't that is that the aim of, of games in general? I don't think so. Wait, are you are you coming down or what's there's just a little shadow there for a lot. Dude, that was great damage. What am I complaining about? Okay, so we love the Polaroid. Already been there. Um Hierophant, uh no, well I mean the Hierophant is so much better than AWAS. We've already been to the ladder on this floor anyway. I didn't even look for the pre-orders. Can I tell you why I didn't look for the pre-orders? It's, it's sold out everywhere. The reason I didn't look is because uh, my wife's Twitter said, I don't know what PS5 to get. So I thought that she was kind of on the... She was on the, the prowl for a pre-order. I am now. She is now, okay. But out I'm not even like... Like, honestly... I'm not that invested in a, in a PS5 at launch. I would love to get Demon Souls, don't get me, get me wrong, but do you remember how our like how our launch uh went for every other console last generation? Yeah, but it was bad. Like when our PS our launch PS4 arrived, it didn't work and then I had to ship it back to Sony and then they shipped me a new one. So it was like, "Oh, new console day, can't wait to cover all the new games." And then uh when it arrived, it was like, it was just bricked right out of the box. Now, the Xbox One was bricked right out of the box. We just didn't notice until about a year later when it stopped doing anything. And then the Wii U was the Wii U. Enough said. We accidentally got two. Oh, I've told this story on numerous occasions. Accidentally get two Wii U's, try to sell one on Craigslist to end up getting the uh, art of the deal by everybody. <laughs> I know you said no haggling, but... My son, it's his birthday tomorrow, and uh, I would really like to get him a Wii U. How does $20 sound? It sounds bad. Why would you ruin my son's birthday like this? Anyway. Yeah, so this is, I'm about to get some real husband points. Do I remember what we said we wanted to buy? Yes. Like you said, one of them is a bread box. The other one, you ready for this? Napkin holder. Oh, baby. And the award for husband of the year goes to... What the heck? This guy who lifted a car off of his wife and <laughs> got into an accident? Oh, it's all politics these days, dude. I remembered the napkin holder. Is that worth nothing? You know what? It's an it's a, a floor where I don't know where I'm going. I, that means I use the emperor card, and I am happy as a result. Okay. 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 What am I doing here? Dude, I don't freaking know. I'm just... <laughs> Such an obviously one run. I'm telling you again, I still think that, that Isaac should have like a... Election night mode. Bear with me, bear with me. Where are you going? Bear with me. Where once... You know, they, they take an aggregate of your items and your HP and your stats. And they go like, look, CNN's predicted with 99.9% .9 uh, authority that this one's going to be a win. And you just take it, you know? This this is an election night victory. 
we'll see what the Supreme Court says about it, you know, in the weeks to come. But we'll just drop AWAS and then get the heck out of town. Ooh, two AWAS. Crazy rune. This is wonderful. I will take quad shot. At least it makes things interesting. I gotta say though, like, I, so I, I was stressed yesterday, you know, I was, I, a lot of driving and Vancouver driving again. I, I, I also get annoyed, by the way, with everybody who's like, well, if you think driving in your town is bad, you should try driving in, you know, Arlen, Texas. And I'm like, dude, come on. I will say, you know, that's what I mean when and I'm, I'm making fun of myself when I'm like, oh, you know, Vancouver drivers are uniquely bad. It's less that and it's more like, you know, I'm just, I wouldn't say like uh, in mortal fear every time I drive, but there's definitely, you know, I would say like once every 30 trips, I save myself from a car accident by just, and it's, it's the core of defensive driving, right? You just, you think to yourself, Hey, if this person knew what they were doing and was paying attention, they wouldn't do this obviously dangerous thing, but they are probably on their cell phone or, you know, texting or whatever, so, um, you know, let's assume that they're gonna do the absolute dumbest, most dangerous thing right now, and then they do, and you're like, alright. But, uh, I gotta admit, I actually, I, I, I like driving. I know that that's, uh, not true for everybody. Um, but the actual, the physical act, I'm not a car guy, as I've said on, on many occasions. Um, but I actually like the act of driving. I find it very pleasant. Uh, also a little stressful depending on the context, for sure, but... Oh, I wanted it! Like, the actual act of, you know, being on the road... Plan in your route. I don't know. Just in general, like, is is a funny thing. This is a very me thing to say. I shouldn't say it's funny. I'll let you be the judge of that. But, um, like, I I like traveling. Ha. Huh? Okay. Yeah. Whoa. Wow. Look. Hold on. We got somebody who likes traveling over here. We finally found somebody who likes traveling. Let me guess. You also like uh, movies and music. But like, you know, being in another place being in another region being in another country is cool don't get me wrong but really i i think like one of the things i enjoy more about traveling is just the act of the travel itself so you're just looking at the map sometimes and being like like putting it into context like you know two generations ago this trip was like unfathomable like if my ancestors were going to go on this trip they would have to like literally take like a 10 week ship's voyage across the pacific ocean with like a uh i don't know like a 10 percent chance of the ship capsizing and everybody all the souls being lost at sea and now it's like and, and then when you landed people were like what <laughs> i have never seen someone from canada in my entire life before and you got no idea what's going on you need like an interpreter just to survive um and now you're just like, you know, uh, oh no, they've only got, they, they only have Thor 1 and 2, they don't have Thor Ragnarok on this flight. Oh well, guess I'll just take a nap. What? We're in Asia? You know, it's like, I find that pretty cool. I, I don't know, I, ro I romanticize just the travel itself, I think. And it, it's, what's fricked up about it is it's not even just like, uh, you know, like a, an overseas journey. Like, when I was in, like, university, I'd romanticize, like, a long walk. Like, one night, a housemate of mine and myself were like, you know what? I'm really craving some Wendy's. Or, we, well, here's how we were like, I'm really craving some Harvey's. So then we walked, like, an hour and a half to get to the closest Harvey's, and it was freaking closed. But we were like, you know what? There's a Wendy's that's only a few miles down the road. We didn't say miles, of course, because we're Canadian. Mm, I think we'll take it. How how low could our range get? Ah, that's totally fine. Um, and then we walked to that Wendy's, and then we walked back. It was like a, a three-hour journey or something like that. But we got... And, you know, we, we got our, our meals, which were definitely not worth the time. But just the journey itself was kind of like, you know, the, the journey was worth it. 
I was gonna say we walked off the meal, but that's definitely... I don't know how long... To, to work off a spicy chicken combo from Wendy's, I'm pretty sure you have to walk for like 9 to 10 hours, but... Look, I'm not too worried about it. I was 19. You know, you, you could throw almost anything in the furnace and it would burn at that age. So it's a running adage. It's like, you know, runners sometimes aren't that worried about their diets because they're like, if, if the furnace runs hot enough, it'll it'll burn anything. I.e., you, you'll remain skinny as long as you keep running marathons. Which is, I mean, honestly, I think it's probably... I know people say, like, you know, there's an expression, like, you can't outrun a bad diet. But I actually, I, I disbelieve that to some extent. I think it has natural limits, let me put it that way. Because even, like, when I was uh, running, I wasn't, like, a serious runner necessarily, but I was running, like, 10K, uh, maybe, like, four times a week. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes five, but I, look, this was a long time ago. I'm not trying to steal my own valor. Um, it's, you know, you get to the point where you're like, okay, every single one of those runs is burning, like, you know, a thousand calories. You can easily make up for a thousand calories, you know, in your post-run meal, but... It's it's gonna have a, a, a negative effect on your... On your weight, regardless, I think. Unless you're, like, a really... Ch I mean, I think at that point, it's almost like more work to, to stay at your present weight, but anyway... Anyway, what am I doing? I don't know, okay? I'm beating the boss, and like I complained about how long this run took, but then it was actually very fast at the end of it, but that's 51. That's Troy Stetcher, baby. For now, thanks for watching. Hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you did, click the like button. I'm the great deal. Of course, subscribe if you want to see more in the future. For now, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time. See you!